All right, for the final video in this series, I want to recap what we've learned, talk about the algorithm design techniques you should be aware of, and what you should be learning next. In this course, we have primarily learned about math, search, and sorting algorithms along with their time complexities. Let me tell you, these topics are the three pillars when learning algorithms with any language. It is also what would be taught when you enroll into a computer science degree or bootcamp. As a front-end developer, you might not use these algorithms in your day-to-day -day work, but it is expected that you know them and are potential topics of discussion during an interview. Hopefully, you now have a good understanding of these fundamental topics. The next topic of discussion is about algorithm design techniques. An algorithm design technique is a general approach for implementing an algorithm. Let me now list down some of the popular algorithm design techniques that you as a developer should be aware of. First, we have brute force, which is a simple and exhaustive technique that evaluates every possible outcome to find the best solution. An example is the linear search algorithm we had a look at earlier in the series. The next technique is the greedy approach where you choose the best option at the current time without any consideration for the future. Now we haven't discussed any algorithms that use this technique, but a few examples are Dystress algorithm, Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm which are all applicable on a graph data structure. More on graphs in the upcoming data structure scores. The next technique is divide and conquer. In this technique, you divide the problem into smaller subproblems. Each subproblem is then solved and the partial solutions are recombined to determine the overall solution. We've had a look at quite a few examples with this technique. Binary search, quick sort, merge sort, and the more recent Tower of Hanoi problem are all examples of divide and conquer. The next technique is dynamic programming. This is similar to divide and conquer in the sense that you divide the problem into smaller subproblems. However, the difference is that you break it down into smaller but overlapping subproblems. In such cases, you store the result and reuse it for the same subproblems. This is called memoization and is an optimization technique that improves the time complexity of your algorithm. The Fibonacci sequence and climbing staircase problems are good examples for this technique. The last technique is backtracking which is similar to brute force. You try generate all possible solutions, but each time you check if the solution satisfies all the given constraints and only then proceed with generating subsequent solutions. If the constraints are not satisfied, you backtrack and go on a different path to find the solution. A popular algorithm that uses this technique is the n queens problem where you have to place n number of queens on a chessboard so that no two queens threaten each other. There are a few more techniques out there, but from a beginner's perspective, this list is a good starting point. Now for the final part, let me tell you how to proceed from here. My advice would be to solve a few problems and determine their time complexities. You have some math algorithms like finding the greatest common divisor using the Euclidean algorithm or finding permutations and combinations of a list of numbers. You can also try finding the longest common substring in a given string. Another great algorithm is the knapsack problem which has practical applications that you might more relate to. Google about these problems at your leisure and learn how to solve them. Once you do that, your next step should be to watch the upcoming data structures course on this channel 
which will cover all about data structures in JavaScript. That will help solve some problems related to trees and graphs which we haven't discussed in the series, but more importantly, it will give you the knowledge to write better code at work or help crack that coding interview round. There is a lot more to learn and I am excited to share that with you in the next series. But for now, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and until next time, take care.